Hi guys, in this video I'll be discussing mitosis and meiosis, sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Finally, a summary. Cells need to divide in order to reproduce. Meiosis and mitosis are two types of cell division. I'll be going through both of them in this video. So let's talk about mitosis. Well, mitosis is the process where body cells divide to produce two genetically identical diploid cells. So in this diagram, this cell divides to produce two genetically identical cells. So what's mitosis used for? Well, mitosis makes normal body cells, and these body cells are diploid. This means they have two sets of each chromosome. So in this diagram, there are actually two chromosomes. So one set of chromosomes could be from the mother and this chromosome could be from the father. If you want a recap of this, you might want to watch the video on mitosis. So let's talk about another type of cell division. So meiosis is another type which happens in the testes in males and the ovaries in females. In the testes, meiosis produces sperm. In the ovaries, meiosis produces eggs. So what exactly is meiosis? Well, meiosis is a process where the cell divides to produce four non-identical haploid cells. So meiosis produces these cells which are genetically non-identical. So what do I mean by haploid? Well, haploid just means that the cells only have one of each chromosome. This means in the nucleus, their chromosomes look like this. Reproduction is when organisms make more of themselves, and one way of doing this is through sexual reproduction. So sexual reproduction occurs when genetic information from two parents, the mother and the father, are combined to produce offspring which are genetically different to either parent. That means they look slightly different or have different genetic info to their parents. So sexual reproduction is actually quite common. Most organisms reproduce through sexual reproduction. And this includes stuff like humans, elephants, fish, and tigers. Now I said before that sexual reproduction produces non-identical offspring. So this means it creates genetic variation as each offspring will have different genes to the other. This means that they are all unique. So sexual reproduction also involves gametes and gametes are sperm and egg cells in humans. Now these gametes fuse together during fertilization and these produce a diploid zygote cell. So in this diagram, you can see that the sperm is joining with the egg cell during fertilization. So how are these gametes made? Well, meiosis is used to make gametes and these gametes are haploid. So this egg cell and the sperm cell are both haploid. These then join together to produce something that's diploid. So this is the diploid zygote. So what's the point in making gametes haploid? It's important because when they fuse together, the cell produced, the zygote, will be diploid. So this zygote will have the correct number of chromosomes. In humans, this is 46. This makes sense because the haploid gametes, the sperm and the egg cells, both have 23 chromosomes. So if you join them together, you get 46 chromosomes. So after the zygote is formed, it then divides many times through mitosis, and this produces an embryo. As the embryo develops, the cells differentiate and become specialized to make all the cells of your body. These include skin cells and hair cells. So what also happens is that the zygote contains genetic information from the father, and this is passed on through the sperm. So the genetic information is found in the head of the sperm. The zygote formed after fertilization also has genetic information from the mother, and this is passed on through the egg. So in this diagram of the egg cell, this is the genetic information. It's in the nucleus of the egg cell. As both an egg cell and the sperm cell combine to create a zygote, it means that the zygote has a mixture of the parent's genetic information. This means it has a unique genome. So this also creates variation in the offspring. Unlike mitosis, the offspring aren't genetically identical to the parent. 
So sexual reproduction doesn't only have to happen in animals. Plants can also sexually reproduce. And in plants, the female gametes are egg cells and the male gametes are pollen. So plants still have an egg cell, but the other gametes are pollen. Where does this happen? Well, fertilization happens in the ovule of the plant. So I'm just gonna summarize sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction involves the fusion of male and female gametes, where the offspring has a mixture of their parents' genes. The offspring are genetically different to their parents. So now we've talked about sexual reproduction. Let's go over another type of reproduction, asexual reproduction. So asexual reproduction involves only one parent. The offspring is a clone of the parent. This means the offspring and the parent are genetically identical. So asexual reproduction happens by mitosis. And unlike meiosis, there's no fusion of gametes, no mixing of genetic material, and no genetic variation between the parents and the offspring. So in asexual reproduction, there is no fertilization. Plants like potatoes can reproduce asexually. They do this by growing tubers, and each tuber produced can grow into a new plant. This means these potatoes are clones of each other. It's not only plants. Bacteria and some animals, such as starfish, can also reproduce asexually. So bacteria do this in a special process called binary fission. Starfish and sea anemones can also reproduce asexually. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCC biology and combined science resource, Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make biology at GCSE a walk in the park.